Hi chefs, Chef John here. Uh, today we're going to be making Persian lamb stew with an Israeli couscous. So our normal lamb stew for our western country would be lamb, vegetables, we have some lovely beef stock here. Yeah, you can use lamb stock preferably, but we've got some beef stock here, you could even use some chicken stock. Yeah? To make it a Persian lamb stew or an Iranian lamb stew, Persian, Iranian type food, we're going to add in some lovely spices. The spices I've got here today, we've got some turmeric, we've got some cinnamon, we've got some lovely fresh bay leaves, I have some cardamom pods and some cloves. So when I'm teaching you to cook from home, I realise that a lot of you guys might not have scales or you might not have uh, anything to measure these ingredients with or you might not have a mortar and pestle to, to, to grind the cardamom pods and cloves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually do that. So I've taken out my cloves and my cardamom pods there. I've got them a little bit mixed up with the spices. Yeah. I'm going to show you actually how to cut these beautiful little cardamom pods, chop them up and your cloves without a mortar and pestle. Okay, so let's do it like this. Just with your knife, you've got a nice sharp knife. Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm really just lifting my knife up just a little bit to try to control everything and keep it all in one place and just finally chop them with my knife. They're not too hard, so the, your knife should go through them. So I've broken them down a little bit, keep it all together, these beautiful little spices. Just use the back of your knife to sort of crush them a little bit. So we've got a mortar and pestle by using our chopping board. So that's fine enough. Yeah, and that's good to add to the rest of my spices here. So everything is in there, it's all mixed together with our hands. We're going to take our lamb, so today we're using a shoulder of lamb. So this is from the forequarter of the lamb that we saw the video where we boned out the forequarter lamb. This is the shoulder, yeah? And we've got some nice dice. There's a little bit of sinew in it and a little bit of fat, but not too much, yeah? This kind of meat would take a lot longer to cook because it's in a part of the animal where the muscle's moving a lot. So that's, that's the reason we have a lot of sinew and a lot of sort of muscle. A little bit fat's good because fat gives us lots of flavour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lamb, and there's 750 grams of lamb there, and I'm going to mix it in to my spices. Just use one hand. That way you're not going to lose any of your spices on your other hand and wash it down the sink. So I'm just going to macerate that into it, yeah? And I'm going to take a little pinch of salt in there as well. So that's my lamb. Look at that, you know. Now, we're taking it from a normal lamb stew into this beautiful Persian flavours, yeah? So, lamb's done. I'm going to wash my hands now. Okay, chefs, so now we have our lamb. My hands are nice and clean. The board's cleaned up. I always keep cleaning as you go. I've got my lamb in the spices. We've got our vegetables cut beautifully. We've got our stock, yeah? We've got our finishing garnish, which is green beans, which are blanched in boiling water and refreshed in cold water and that you can cook them for only two minutes yeah take them out and then we're going to cut them up later and we've got our raisins yeah this is some dried fruits but what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick my pan on for this i'm just using a nice uh, flat base frying pan with a lid so it's almost like a pot yeah if you don't have a fry pan like this you can use a pot the important thing is make sure that there's not too much meat in ratio to the size of the pot because the pot then, the, the meat will sweat rather than fry. We really want to fry this meat, caramelize it, get lots, lots of uh, color onto it, yeah? So. so the next thing we're gonna do is, while that pan's getting nice and hot, I've got some olive oil. I'm gonna drop my olive oil into the pan. Just a little bit, because we don't want to have too much. There you go. That's about two large tablespoons of olive oil in the pan here. See the oil starting to separate now? That's when it's starting to heat up. We're now going to drop in our meat. Now, as you can see, even this pan is not big enough for 750 grams of meat. If I was to add the rest of this meat in here, it would probably start sweating because it will reduce the temperature of the pan too much. So I'm going to do it in two batches, half and half. 
Yeah. Now, as you can see, the meat has caramelized on one side. It's starting to shrink a little bit. I'm now going to turn that over just gently. Not moving about too much, so I don't lose any of the heat. So you can see that lovely color on the meat, nice and brown there. And I'm going to let it caramelize on the other side exactly the same for another minute or so. Now what this is doing is, this is sealing the meat and caramelizing it and it's also cooking the spices so the spices are becoming more aromatic, yeah? So now that this is cooked and sealed off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and add it into my bowl. I'm going to keep all the juices and then I'm going to put my pan on for the next second batch, yeah? And as you can see there's not a lot of juices there because we're actually frying the meat rather than stewing it. If we were stewing it and it was too, the pan was too cold, there was too much meat in there at once, it would probably uh, be quite a lot of liquid in there as well, yeah? Okay guys, so the second half of the meat has been caramelized and I'm going to put it into the pot inside the rest of the meat. That's beautiful. So what I'm going to do now is I'll keep the same pot, put it back on the stove, put a little bit more olive oil on the bottom of the pot and then we're going to put in our onions, our celery, our garlic and our uh, carrots. First goes in the garlic. There's 30 grams of finely chopped fresh garlic. It's a whole carrot here, so it's a little bit more than it says in the recipe. But and get that in straight away so that the garlic doesn't burn and start to, to go all nutty. And then get our onions and our celery in there as well. And as soon as all these ingredients go in, it will start to sweat a little bit. May put a little tiny little bit more olive oil in there. There you go. And turn my gas down just a little bit now. Perfect. Turn it back up again. And now I'm going to add in my caramelized meat with my spices and See some of this lovely juice here? We're going to put in all this juice as well. So it's almost like we're deglazing the pan with the meat juices. Beautiful. Awesome. You can already see that this is going to be a delicious dish because we've got lots of foundations of flavors there. We're frying everything off to extract the maximum amount of flavor of every ingredient that's in the pan. I'm going to put in a little bit of the beef stock now. You can hear it sizzling and caramelizing. There we go. I'm going to put in a little bit of beef stock. I won't put it all in at the moment. So that was a litre, so I'll put in about just over half a litre. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in some lemon zest and some lemon juice. And also I've got some lovely fresh thyme here and some basil that I'm going to put in as well. Okay. So. I'm just going to zest straight into the pan so all the oils get into it. This will just freshen up all the, the flavours that's in the pan. Okay, there's the juice. Just rub your lemon a little bit, make sure all the juices get flowing. And then, that in half. I'm just going to squeeze that right in there. Here's my hands. Oops. Variations to this dish, you could put orange juice and orange zest in there as well. You can put saffron and saffron water in there would be perfect as well. And then I've got some lovely fresh thyme that I'm going to put in. I'm going to leave the basil until a little bit later and put that in. Other variations to the dish, instead of using the diced lamb, we could use the lamb shanks. This would work perfectly with lamb shanks. I've done before lamb shanks with uh, roasted capsicum and dried tomatoes and basil and garlic. It's like a Mediterranean style lamb. That's really nice as well. I think that's not enough. Maybe one little bit. Let's get some more. A little bit more time in there. It's just beautiful. And drop that time in there. A little bit more salt. A little bit. Cracked black pepper, my favourite ingredient. 
and then that's coming up now to a lovely boil look at that's beautiful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that down to a gentle simmer and because the liquid's quite thin it'll cook much quicker than it would if it was in a thick liquid so today we're going to be thickening up our dish with a beurre manier which is basically equal quantities of flour and butter just massaged together to become a, like a little dough and we're going to drop that into our sauce right at the end to thicken it up yeah but actually I, with this dish i like quite a thin light sauce rather than a thick heavy sauce okay guys so while the persian lamb stew is just simmering away here, there's enough stock in there. I'm going to prepare the finishing touches for the dish, get myself ready. So before I spoke about the Bourmanier as a thickening agent, it's just equal quantities of softened butter. So let the, room, the, the butter sit at room temperature for a little bit until it's nice and soft and put in your flour and just mash them together. So it's equal quantities. We might not even use all of this beurre manier, but if we don't, no problem, stick it in your fridge. You can use it to thicken up something else later. Great for thickening up soups and sauces. Yeah. Just be careful when you're taking it straight from your fridge to use as a thickening up agent, because you might end up, because it's cold and hard, you end up with lumps inside your, your soup or your sauce. Whereas when it's nice and soft like this, as you can see, see how good it is to have a nice spatula when it's nice and soft like this it's easy to mix in with the rest of the the sauce without making lumps and we're going to have these green beans remember I, I, I spoke to you before the green beans we want to blanch them in boiling salted water drop them in two minutes take them out and you might have seen in the uh, at the beginning the equipment required just basically take your pot pour it over the sieve and then quickly back in the pot and cold water. If you don't have ice cubes at home, fine, just fresh cold water. Just do not overcook your beans. And that's all you'll need the sieve for today. Yeah. So with the beans that now that they're cooked, I'm just going to line them up and I'm going to cut them to the desired size. I, I reckon I want my beans looking just a little bit like, almost like batons. So just line them up on your board. Okay, guys, from, or chefs, I should say, what, from what I can see here, it's cooking lovely, yeah, and that's going to take about 45 minutes to an hour. We'll check it, we'll pull the meat, see if it starts to pull apart slightly, we can take it off, yeah. Uh, all the other ingredients is ready, so we've now got some time, which should give us enough time to concentrate on the Israeli couscous, so that's what I'm going to get into next. Israeli couscous which is a manufactured product it's a little pale some people think it's a grain it's not it's a manufactured product and they've made them into large little pails and they've toasted them yeah so what we're going to do is we're going to cook them out so different from normal couscous which is a little bit sm much much smaller this is a little bit bigger and we're going to have to take a little bit longer to cook it rather than just pouring the hot stock over it and leaving it we're actually going to cook it out a little bit yeah so the first thing I want to do is get my pot so the pot in size is relative to the amount of couscous that I'm going to be cooking so I'm just using a little pot here I've got a nice tight fitting lid for the pot as well which will help to keep the steam in I'm going to turn my gas up now when I was chopping my sun-dried tomatoes I had some lovely sun-dried tomato oil in the jar so I'm going to use that to fry the vegetables off and the couscous my pan's getting nice and hot. So I'm going to add in my sun dried tomato and the oil. I'm going to add in the vegetables, the carrot and the celery, eh, the leek, carrot and leek, and the diced capsicums. I have here some cumin just to spice it up a little bit. You can cook this couscous just basically with some chicken stock or even some water and put nothing in it if you wanted to. Yeah, some people do that, then they add ingredients into it afterwards or they just have it like a normal rice. 
that people uh, would have rice with their dish. Yeah? We're actually just adding a lot of stuff in here today, so it's getting quite busy in there. Yeah, but we've got lots of vegetables, dried tomatoes, a little bit of cumin, and I've got a little bit spicy chili here, yeah, chili powder. Yeah, so we're just going to put a little bit of that in there, not too much. Okay. Get my spatula. I've got enough oils in here, so now I'm going to put in my couscous. It's a bit like making risotto, yeah. There's no need to wash this couscous. It's just like pasta, like a dried pasta. So when you're going to buy it in the shop, look for Israeli couscous, or sometimes they'll be called Jerusalem couscous, or pearls, couscous pearls. Can you see that, guys? Look how the flavours are getting mixed in there. Yeah. Now I have my chicken stock. So I'm going to, if this is 150 grams of couscous, I'm going to be putting in about 250 milliliters of chicken stock because like I said it does take a little bit longer. Normal couscous will do equal quantities of stock to, to couscous but this one I'm going to put a little bit more than is required because I want to cook it out. So I'm going to add in my stock. Beautiful. Now if you can see from there it's almost coming to the boil straight away. I just want to cook it out just a little bit. Maybe for about two or three minutes until I'm happy that the couscous is really starting to swell and then I'll take it off and hopefully there'll be enough liquid in there that the couscous will absorb all the liquid and we'll be left with some nice finished product. So I'm just going to drop the lid on that now and I'm going to turn it down a little bit because I don't want to burn it. Yeah, this one, here we go. Let's have a quick check of our lamb. As you can see from the lamb, it's still going strong here, yeah? Still plenty of liquid in there. Because we've almost created a pressure cooker by keeping the lid on like this, yeah? This will take a couple of minutes and then I will take the lid off, give it a little bit of a check, see if it needs more stock, and then I will put the lid on, switch the gas off and push it to the side and just leave it there, yeah? You can see the couscous is starting to swell up a little bit. I think it's going to need just a little bit more chicken stock, so that's from 250 ml. I'm now going up to about 280, nearly 300 ml of chicken stock in there. Yeah. I'm going to give it another quick blast on the heat. I'm going to put a lid on it and push it to the back. It's coming up to the boil now. that to the back and leave it now and let it absorb all the juices yeah and hopefully it will be perfect so that's our stuff done for today our food so what I'm going to do is clean down and get ready to present the food once it's cooked yep thank you all right chefs I'm just checking my lamb now it's been just over 30 minutes or so maybe a bit premature but I just want to check see how it's doing I can feel it's still a little bit tough a bit tight still yeah, and I can see that it needs a little bit more liquid. So here we go. Just add in a little bit more beef stock. Beautiful. Okay. And that. Just bring the heat back up. Get it simmering again. And that's going to take about another 15 minutes. Okay, chefs. So I would like you to have a quick look here. I've added more stock. I've added... The whole liter of stock now and I've even added a little bit more water. Have a look at the balance of sauce to meat. So the meat is just nearly cooked, it's just about there but I've added more liquid in there so that I have a good balance of juice to meat yeah and it's not dried out. So if your stock has evaporated before your meat has cooked just add some water to bring it back up again and keep it cooking. So now that it's cooking and it's nearly there I'm going to take this opportunity now to add in my dried fruit. This is my raisins. I think this is too much raisins in ratio to meat. I've added about two-thirds of the raisins. I think it's way too much. 
Okay, so too much raisins, but just let the raisins soak into that hot liquid before I thicken it up, yeah? And they'll swell up a little bit. So we've got my Bourmanier now, which is our thickening agent. So I'm going to take a little bit. Again, I might not need all the Bourmanier, so I'm going to take maybe half of it, put it into a bowl. I'm going to take some of the liquid and add it into that. and then try to stir that in to make a slurry almost. It'll burn my knee. You can see how it's thickened up that small amount of sauce. And then I'm now going to add that slurry into the lamb dish. actually a little bit thicker than I want it. So I'm going to add a little bit of water into my bowl and add that to it as well. Now my lamb is cooked. My sauce is a really good consistency. I'm just going to cook it out a little bit longer. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of cracked pepper. Now I'm going to add in the green beans. I'm going to keep a few of the beans just for finishing off the dish at the end. Put a little bit of olive oil on them. I'm going to add in my thyme. I'm going to keep a little bit of the thyme just for finishing at the end. I'm going to add in some basil. And I've just ripped this basil. All right, I'm very happy with the end product here now. So what I am ready to plate. So I've got some nice dishes here to, to serve the food in, and they're nice and warm. I'm going to add that in, and these are double-sided, so they actually keep the heat in the food. If you've only got plates at home or bowls, that's fine, yeah? I like to serve with Eastern cuisine or Middle Eastern cuisine as well. We serve the starch separate from the, the actual... Uh, stew or curry or whatever it is. We don't put it on the same plate. We like to serve it separately. Yeah. So with this one, I'm going to just take a little bowl here in the sink. And we're going to just take out the cinnamon and the bay leaves that were cooked in. Yeah. Just to make sure, because we don't want to serve them. There's another one there. Nice consistency, nice balance. Yeah, with the meat and the sauce, and then we're going to transfer that into my dish now, yeah? So if you've just got smaller bowls at home, just use a, a, any kind of serving dish that you think. If you want to serve one portion or serve it family style, the way I'm doing it right now, then that's good. Oh my goodness, that does look good. There. And then I'm just going to take my beans them over as well. The remainder of that basil. And the remainder of the thyme. And then, just at the end, a little bit of oil. We want to serve our couscous. Let's have a look to see how it's doing. Off that. Now, if you see that, look at that. All the liquid has been soaked up with the couscous. The pearls are nice and loose and all stuck together. If you put too much stock in there and you boil it too much and overcook it, it'll all stick together just like a big rice cake. Exactly if you were cooking rice, you have too much liquid in there, it's going to overcook and stick together. There you go guys, what do you think about that? We've got Persian lamb stew and Israeli couscous. 
Yeah, I hope you enjoy cooking this uh, as much as I have, and uh, I hope you enjoy eating it. Now you're cooking at home, you will.